just submitting for the uh, sake of time a written explanation of my negative vote and I will submit this as part of the record. Thank, thank you, Mr. Thank President. you, sir. Senator Pangilinan. <coughs> thank you, Mr. President. May I be allowed to explain my vote? You have Very one minute, sir. Uh, maybe a minute and a half. Go ahead. Mr. President, Mr. Speaker, all of us here, public officers and employees, including members of the armed forces, before embarking on a life of public service, took a solemn oath, and I quote, to uphold and defend the Constitution, to bear true faith and allegiance to it. Taimtim tayong nanumpa na matapat nating ipagkakaloob sa abot nating kakayahan na itaguyod at ipagtanggol ang saligang batas na magkakaroon ng totoong pananampalataya at katapatan dito. Pinag-isa tayo ng saligang batas sa ating pagiging lingkod bayan. Gaano kasagrado ang ating sinumpang mga tungkulin sa bayan? Our troops have protected and defended us know this sacred duty. They know this when they leave their homes to fight in battle. Many have paid with their limbs and lives for this adherence to the Constitution. Ano ang sinasabi ng saligang batas tungkol sa martial law? Article 7, Section 18 of the Constitution states, Upon the initiative of the President, the Congress may in the same manner extend such proclamation or suspension for a period to be determined by Congress, if the invasion or rebellion shall persist and public safety requires it. Wala na hong aktual na rebellion. Hindi kailangan para sa kaligtasan ng bayan. The threat that terrorists and rebels pose is not a basis for an extension of military rule in Mindanao. The same provision of the Constitution gives the President a limited power not exceeding 60 days to suspend the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus or place the Philippines and or any part thereof under martial law. Again, as provided by the same Constitution, we all swore and to uphold, Congress gave the President a six-month extension while the battle was ongoing. Now here we are again to discuss the President's request to extend it by one year and on what grounds. We submit the grounds do not exist to merit such an extension. Walang aktual na rebellion, hindi kailangan para sa kaligtasan ng bayan. The Constitution which we all public officers and employees swore to uphold and defend gives actual rebellion or invasion as the only justification for the declaration of martial law. The extreme power of martial law for a period of one year in any part of the country without actual rebellion but merely a threat was never intended by our framers. In fact, our framers amended the section of martial law and removed the provision or imminent danger thereof in the 1935 and 1973 constitution. Martial law is an extreme measure and should never be resorted to except in extreme circumstances. Bilang mga lingkod bayan, hindi lang natin isinasantabi ang ating sagradong tungkulin na itaguyod at ipagtanggol ang saligang batas. Mukhang lalabagin pa natin at palalawakin pa. For us to go after terrorists and those who disregard our laws, we must do so consistent with the rule of law and the Constitution. Otherwise, we find ourselves in the danger of becoming lawbreakers or disregarding the rule of law. And I quote, we become the monsters, the danger of becoming the monsters we seek to defeat. We understand that martial law in Mindanao is popular in many areas on the ground, but it is a declaration, but its declaration rather, whether popular or not, must be based on the Constitution. It was earlier expressed that the imposition of martial law is an exercise of political will by the executive. We have no problem with the exercise of political will for as long as this will does not supplant the sovereign will of the people as expressed in the Constitution. Our oath is not merely words. Our oath is a sacred act of commitment of office and duty that binds us, public servants, to our nation and our people. Taimtim tayo na nung pa na matapat nating ipagkaloob sa abot ng ating kakayahan na itaguyod at ipagtanggol ang saligang batas na magkakaroon ng totoong pananampalataya at katapatan dito. It is with regret, regret that I say that the grant of martial law extension without actual rebellion for the period of one year, a wholesale period of one year, 
is not only contrary to the Constitution, it is an abdication of our sacred duty and the surrendering of our power as Congress to act as a check and balance on the executive branch. In closing, Mr. Speaker, Mr. President, this representation was a student activist in the early 80s who stood up against martial law and authoritarian rule. I must admit, I never thought the day would come again that martial law would be imposed on our nation. We fought martial law then, just and I can you, say we did uh, not Mr. fight martial law in my youth for us today to reimpose it on our people and our nation. The struggle to uphold our constitution, the rule of law, and our democracy continues. Maraming salamat. That's a point of information to members. If any member wishes to pass his or her time to another, that member should inform the Secretariat. Kindly inform the Secretariat so that the Secretariat will know and inform the presiding officer. And a member cannot just stand and say, so and so gave me the time. So the one yielding the time will please approach the Secretariat and inform them accordingly. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Majority Leader. Representative Alejano, you are recognized. To explain your vote. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. President. I would like to state that I support the armed forces and anything that would make them effective in the performance of their mandate. But I voted no for the extension of martial law for one year in the entire Mindanao region because of the following reasons. One, Marawi crisis is over and I see no legal basis for the extension of martial law for another year. Extension of martial law would run counter to the provisions of the 1987 Constitution on martial law. There is no stopping the President and the armed forces from going after terrorists even without declaring martial law. Martial law is not equivalent to combat operations. Defense and intelligence infrastructures are in place in the whole of Mindanao and were provided with operational and intelligence funds. There is no doubt that an arrest or search warrant could be secured from courts when supported with solid intelligence information. Relying on martial law to arrest a person is short of a meeting that intelligence gathering is inefficient. This could lead to shotgun approach or witch hunt. Extending martial law for one year is an admission that civilian authority... Thank you, Representative Alejano. Your I, I'm fired. going to wrap up uh, one more uh, point, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker. Without addressing the root causes of the problem in a clear and sustainable national security policy and strategy, understood and embraced not only by our security forces, but by all stakeholders, most especially we policymakers and high government officials, I can see no end to this vicious cycle of rebellion and secession in the country. Maraming salamat, Mr. Speaker, Senate President. Thank you, Representative Bordado is recognized. Explain your... Mr. President, six months ago, I voted no to President's request to Congress to extend the declaration of martial law in Mindanao. I voted no because the President failed to provide any evidence that martial law offers any distinct strategic advantage to our brave soldiers and police personnel in their fight against the Maute terrorists. It brought no added military, logistical, or legal value to the government's campaign against terrorism. Today, the President again requested Congress to extend the declaration of martial law in Mindanao using the same arguments, only this time he included the so-called threat of the New People's Army as one of the key reasons. Kailangan bang martial law para tugunan ng diumanong banta ng NPA? Why would the government use martial law against an armed non-state group which it itself described as a spent force? Mr. President, martial law will not address the NPA's abuses. Quite the opposite, martial law will only revive a spent force. I'm also shocked, Mr. President, that the executive today said that public safety is an abstract idea and martial law is a flexible concept which allows the President to do flexible things like suppress freedom of assembly, etc. This is more than appalling. This is exactly the kind of thinking that plunged our country into darkness decades ago. And this is the kind of thinking that the present Constitution seeks to correct. May I remind the Executive that Section 18, Article 7 of the Constitution states that a state of martial law does not suspend the operation of the Constitution. 
the Bill of Rights is still in force. I understand the need to address the unwarranted violence of armed non-state actors, particularly the abuses of the NPA against unarmed civilians and military personnel. My party, Akabayan, and I are not unfamiliar with them. Many of my party leaders and members have been included in the NPA's hit list, harassed and even murdered for the simple reason that we hold a different ideological point of view from them. I know the desperation of the public longing.